Welcome back everyone, it is Eric from Rare Canyon. Today we're back checking out the first batch of Paradigm Trigger cards that just got revealed while I was away out of town for Baltimore Regionals. So if you guys are wondering why uploads on the channel were a little bit slow this past week, I was away for Regionals, and then actually immediately when I got back in town, I had jury duty the same week. So it's definitely been a busy past week or so for myself. But like I said, we're finally getting back in the swing of things and today we're gonna be checking out these brand new cards that just got revealed while I was away. Now, Paradigm Trigger is gonna be the last uh, Japanese set that will be eventually lumped into our Silver Tempest set this fall. So we don't have too much longer. It's September now. Uh, these cards are gonna come out in November. So these cards are coming up a little bit on the horizon now. And of course, as you can see, Lugia V-Star is gonna be the main mascot of this set. And I think it actually does look to be kind of an interesting card as well. But with that being said, let's hop into these cards and see what's coming out in this new set. So of course, before we get into the V-Star, we do need to look at Lugia V here, which actually does have a kind of an okay attack. You know, we typically don't wanna leave the game with our two prize unevolved Pokemon. But if we do have to attack with Lugia, just for a single energy, discard a card from your hand and draw three. So, I mean, if we're attacking with Lugia, we're in a bad spot anyway. So drawing a couple of cards to draw us out of that funk definitely can be good. But of course the V-Star are definitely gonna be the star of the show. And I absolutely love the way this Lugia looks. One of my favorite legendaries, I think. Uh, so happy to see Lugia's getting a very handsome looking new card here. But 280 HP, Lightning Weakness, Fighting Resistance, and a two retreat. Has just one attack for four colors energy is 220, and you may discard the Stadium card in play. And then Lugia does have an ability, which is I think what makes this card interesting. It says you may use this during your turn, choose up to two colorless Pokemon from your discard pile, except for Pokemon with the rule box, and put them on your bench. So Pokemon V, GX, um, not Prism Stars, but Radiant Pokemon, etc all have rule boxes. So this is gonna be mainly just for those single prize colors Pokemon. And so that's actually not too bad. Now we do have a important colors Pokemon we're gonna take a look at here in just a second. But I was peeking through the card pool and there's there's not too many cool colors Pokemon with abilities that we can accelerate. I think probably the best one's gonna be Barrel. Uh, but there is another new colors Pokemon in this set that actually is pretty important for the Lugia. So let's just scroll down to that real quick. And that's gonna be the brand new Archeops. So Archeops actually has a really strong ability. It says once during your turn, you may search your deck for up to two special energy cards and attach them to one of your Pokemon. So great ability, but this is on a stage two fossil Pokemon. So we would pretty much almost never want to actually go through the normal channels of getting this thing into play. Being able to just pitch these away with Ultra Ball or Quick Ball and accelerate them back out with Lugia is definitely gonna be the preferred way of getting this set up. So of course the idea here is we want to cheat some of these Archeops into play with our V-Star power, and then we can use Archeops to power up this four energy attack cost. Now four energy to do 220 does seem like kind of a bad damage to energy ratio, but guys, once you factor in the Archeops, it's really not very hard to get this thing up and running. You know, you have to figure uh, Arceus V-Star attacks for roughly the same attack cost. And I do like that Lugia actually has a ton of different colorless energies that we can use with it. Obviously we can just accelerate two double turbo energies that is gonna nerf our damage down to 180. But if we wanna get, you know, a little bit fancier with things, we actually can attach a variety of the other colorless energies. We still have powerful colorless energy in the format to increase our, uh, our damage a little bit. We also have the brand new, ooh, I think it's, is it Wonder Energy, Wonder Guard Energy? Uh, there's one coming out that will allow you to reduce damage done to you by Pokemon V by 30. So that definitely seems good. That was a card that I previously wasn't too sold on because it's kind of hard to find when you need it. But Lugia and Archeops can actually get it set into play pretty quickly and, you know, effectively give your Lugia uh, 310 HP or force opposing Pokemon V to do 310 to knock you out. So I actually think Lugia is not a bad attacker. I initially saw this card while I was away. Didn't have too much time to think about it since I was, you know, away at regionals. But uh, the more I've kind of had time to marinate on this, the more I do like this. Because of course we do have cards like Capture Energy, the new, I think it's Gift Energy. There's Lucky Energy. There's a lot of different ways we can power up Lugia to give it sort of these additional bonus effects to build our deck around. So definitely curious what else is gonna come out in this same set alongside Lugia, but I think this is a pretty cool card overall. Uh, I do, however, just wish the ability was 
maybe a little bit better. I mean, I guess we probably only ever want two Archeops with this, but it's a shame there's not too many other better colorist targets for us to choose. Uh, but nevertheless, cool card, I think. Next up, we have Unknown V and V-Star. I just want to point out, I really do like the art on this thing. If you notice, they have chosen uh, all of the unknowns to spell out V-Star here. So just kind of a cool touch. Now, Unknown V, nothing too special. Just at first glance, it does have uh, Confusion for 30. But the second attack, actually not too bad. If you only have one prize card left when you use the attack, you win. So it's kind of like the Slowbro back from the Pokemon Go set. You know, it is a little bit more of a heavier attack cost, but this is a basic Pokemon, so it is fair that uh, it does have a slightly higher attack cost. But nevertheless, there's definitely going to be some ways we could, you know, potentially abuse this. There's things you could do with cards like Thornton to, you know, cheat this thing into play out of nowhere on an attacker that is powered up and just kind of steal, you know, the last attack of the game really quickly. So that's kind of cool. Uh, looking at the Unknown V-Star, however, also an interesting card, but I'm not sold on this thing being great though. So if we take a look at this thing, it's first attack for a psychic energy flip three coins is 70 times the number of heads. So on average, we're gonna hit for around 140. Uh, 140 for one is okay. It is a two shotting amount of damage. 250 HP is definitely pretty low. This thing is gonna be one shot by pretty much everything running around. And there are gonna be turns too where you're only gonna do 70 with this thing. I mean, sometimes zero as well, but yeah, the damage output in this thing is not great, but the V-Star power here kind of reminds me of Aerodactyl V-Star in the sense that it's, you know, on paper, a pretty good effect, but how practical is it actually to use this thing? So for three colorless energy, until this Pokemon leaves play, it gains the ability that has the effect all your opponent's Pokemon's weakness is now psychic. Yeah, the big issue with this card, again, much like with Aerodactyl V-Star that we just saw in Lost Origin, is the earliest we're using this attack is going to be on turn two of the game. But really on turn two, that's when we want to start doing damage. We don't really want to be taking another turn to put ourselves behind just to make our opponent, um, you know, psychic weak. And the other issue, too, is after this unknown goes down, <laughs> I mean, this effect goes with it. A lot of times you're just going to use this and something like a Mew or a Giratina or a Palkia is just going to knock you out and you effectively just wasted your V-Star power and you're just left with, you know, potentially an attacker that can hit for 140-ish on future turns. So I think this card seems kind of gimmicky. Um, I actually think out of the two, the regular Unknown V seems a little bit better for the second attack here. Uh, so Unknown V-Star, it's it's cool. It's kind of neat that Unknown got a V-Star. Definitely did not see that coming, but uh, not too crazy about this one. So next up, we have a batch of cards that's going to be probably no more than like a fun deck for the ladder on PTCGO. Uh, so let's check out more Peko here. And I do love the art on this thing, too. They all It all kind of ties together. Uh, for a Lightning Energy, you can use this attack only if Dedene used Dede short during your last turn. The attack is 60 each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So 60 spread is definitely solid, though Manaphy is a pretty popular Pokemon right now at the time of recording, so I don't know how often this is actually going to be able to be used, but uh, kind of neat. But of course, that begs the question, what does Dede short do, since we need to use that before we use this? So of course, the Dene here has Dead A Short to 60, and you can only use this attack if your Togedemaru used Togedash during your last turn, and the Fending Pokemon is now paralyzed. So auto paralysis, not too bad, but I will say that a lot of decks, especially after Lost Origin specifically, are going to be playing a ton of switching cards. And I'm actually not sure how frequently this actually is going to stick. Like we're because we're psychic and not lightning, we can't even knock out things like Cramorant. So doesn't seem great, but we should at least, I guess, check out Togedemaru before we completely write all these cards off. Then Togedemaru here has intact for a lightning energy does 10. Flip a coin, if heads, this Pokemon is not, or if this Pokemon is knocked out during your opponent's next turn, your opponent can't take any prize cards for it. So actually kind of cool, I guess with a Glimwood Tangle and play, uh, we can increase our odds of just staying, not staying alive, but preventing your opponent from taking prizes. That's cool. So we have to kind of lead the game with this thing. And then from there, kind of pivot into some of these other attackers that we have. And there is actually a Pikachu as well that kind of ties into this whole deck as well. 
So Pikachu, I think, is probably the best of all these attackers for, again, just a single lightning energy, just 20. If you're Dedenne, use Dede short during your last turn. This attack does 180 more damage. So this is definitely going to be far and away the heaviest hitting of all these attackers. And thank God, too, because these other Pokemon definitely have not been the strongest. 200 for one is pretty good. That, of course, is going to one-shot Palkia V-Star with just a puny Pikachu. So that, you know, that's definitely enticing. Of course, the issue is um, we have to chain all these attacks in a very specific order. And after we use Pikachu, we can't attack with it again. Like, even if they knock us out, we can't just throw up another Pikachu and be ready to go. We have to actually attack with Dedenne instead. Uh, but if we attack with Dedenne, we have to attack with Togedemaru. So we literally have to constantly attack Togedemaru, Dedenne, Pikachu in that same loop over and over and we, I guess we could choose to weave in a more Peko as well if our opponent did not get down something like Manaphy. But overall, I think this seems just a little bit too gimmicky for, for me to get behind. Okay, next up we have a Behem. So just for a single twin or double turbo energy, does 60 to one of your opponent's Pokemon, apply weakness and resistance even for benched Pokemon. So, okay. Uh, I guess what they're trying to push here is you can use your unknown V star to change your opponent's weakness to psychic and then use something like Behem to, you know, hit those things for weakness. So I guess with a telescopic sight, you could one shot something like a Crobat V or a Luminion V for an easy two prizes. But yeah, I think this is overall going to be fairly weak, if I'm being honest. So we also have a new Metacham with actually a pretty solid Metatite as well. I really do like this. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks, both yours and your opponent's. So that's great. We don't have to worry about something like a Radiant Greninja sniping us if we are trying to get our Metacham set up. So definitely a bonus, you know, a nice little bonus that we have with its pre-evolution. Uh, Metacham, however... Um, I'm not quite as enthusiastic about, but it's a cool card nonetheless. It says if you have exactly four cards in hand, this Pokemon's attacks cost three colorless less. So we've seen this before on especially a couple of different Yen Mega over the years. And we do have ways at getting to that four card amount with cards like Judge, Marnie, but even just with like normal cards like Ultra Ball and Quick Ball that allow us to play down our hand size. I don't think it's actually too difficult to pull this off if we do need to. Uh, but the attack for three colors energy does 80 plus 90 more if your opponent has a Pokemon VMAX in play. So this definitely would have been, uh, I think, much better maybe like a year ago when Rapid Strike Urshifu was at the height of its popularity. Uh, being able to just instantly nuke Urshifu and take an easy three prizes would have been great. These days, Psychic Weak VMAXs aren't that popular right now. And as a result, Metacham's not quite as attractive. Now, again, if we want to be really dumb and gimmicky, we can play Unknown V-Star to change their weakness uh, to Psychic and then knock them out with this on subsequent turns. So if we are playing, it's like a Mew V-Max or a Flying Pikachu or a Curum V-Max. I guess we could go Unknown V-Star into Metacham uh, to be able to start taking big one shots on future turns. So, well, I guess if Urshifu ever does see a resurgence, this could also be a good target for like Zoroark toolbox decks. Like this might be a little bit better than Weird Ear since you like since Weird Ear's math is a little bit off. This could actually be the the better psychic counter card. But uh, yeah, I think this card is just released into the wrong year. <laughs> really, that's what it boils down to. I think this actually would have been a little bit better had this come out like a year ago. And for our final two new cards we're going to check out, we actually have what I thought was a pretty big surprise. Uh, you know, up until this point, it looked like Silver Tempest was going to be a largely uninteresting set without a whole lot of new mechanics. But we have these new tablet item cards, which are really cool. They give, they're a Pokemon tool card that give a Pokemon V a V star power. So we actually did see this actually at the end of the Sun and Moon era as well, where we saw uh, Pokemon tools that gave very specific Pokemon GX attacks. Now they didn't wind up seeing much play, uh, partially because they were restricted to Pokemon that already had certain attacks, but these are much, much more flexible. We can attach these to any Pokemon V out there. So this one, we have the Grove tablet. During your turn, you may search your deck for any one card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So this is of course gonna be an ability. And like I said, we can put this on any Pokemon V. So if we are playing, Maybe some sort of, you know, think back to some of the other previously non-V-Star 
uh, Pokemon V and V Max that I've seen play that don't have a V Star power to fall back on. So like Mew V Max, good example. Mew V Max is always looking for different combo cards. They're looking for power tablets, choice bell, bosses orders, and be able to throw this down on a Mew V Max and be able to just instantly get exactly what you need for turn is really big. Uh, and one thing that's cool is we can actually just throw this down on a Genesect V. We only have to have this on UV Max. That way we can still use Choice Belt for turn uh, as like our primary Pokemon tool. Or think of a card like Zossian V. That's another card that used to be very, very good. And now if we attach this, uh, has another way at being able to, you know, find what you need for turn. Admittedly, I haven't checked all of the cards in the card pool. Again, I'm kind of just spitballing off the top of my head here. But yeah, we'll definitely have to rethink a lot of these older Pokemon V and V Max that, you know, previously did not have access to a V-Star power. So this is definitely a very, very good one. And looks like the other Pokemon tool we have is gonna be Earth Tablet. So again, uh, another V-Star power. This one's gonna be an attack though. Uh, for three colorless energy, put damage counters on all of your opponent's Pokemon V until they have 100 HP remaining. Uh, so for me, the big one that comes to mind for this is gonna be like spreading archetypes like Rapid Strike Urshifu, just because with GMAX Rapid Flow doing 120 to two different Pokemon, we can use this to set up those double KOs. And actually this could enable some cool things where like, let's say we're going against Palkia, easy example. They usually don't, I'd say on average, most of these like attacking V-Stars and V-Dex, especially ones with Inteleon engines, only have like two primary attackers in play at any point. So there is a world where you can actually set up a turn to knock out like two attackers at once and leave your opponent without another VMAX, V-Star, etc., ready to go. So that seems pretty cool. Uh, but again, like in the case of Grove Tablet, guys, I have not, you know, combed through every single card that we still have in the format. So there's probably some other Pokemon V or VMAX I'm forgetting that might want something like this. So if you guys can think of any, or if you've already taken the liberty at combing through the card pool, uh, feel free to let me know some of your favorite ones that you think we could pair these new tools with. But I gotta say, I'm actually pretty excited, uh, you know, for these cards and actually just in general, kind of enthusiastic about Paradigm Trigger. So if you guys saw Incandescent Arcana, Japan's last set, set was pretty weak. I'm not gonna lie, it was like the definition of mid. It was not very good at all. And I was kind of worried, you know, this final Sword and Shield set in, you know, this fall in Silver Tempest wouldn't be that great. But right now, Paradigm Trigger is giving us some cards to be, you know, I think, you know, worth looking forward to. We have the new tablet cards. And then of course, Lugia V-Star is gonna be the other big thing. I do think this is potentially another good Pokemon V-Star that we'll have running around. But you guys will have to let me know your full thoughts today down below in the comment section, which of these cards has you the most excited. And of course, if you did enjoy today's content, remember to leave a like on the video. And if you're feeling maybe a little bit extra generous and wanna take that support to the next level, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. Links to everything will be down below in the description, but as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.